Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you how to create some die cut stickers using Canva and making them a print and cut. Now the Brother Scan and Cut Print and Cut activation card I think has been discontinued and in a previous YouTube video in my Canva playlist I have shown you how to add a darker border so that you can then print your PDF document that you save directly from Canva and then scan it through your scan and cut to get the scan and cut to recognize the outline. I know a lot of people when they're making stickers they like them to have a white edge around them so I thought I'd show you an alternative way of doing it in Canva. So to start off with, I'm using Canva, you can see it here, it's www.canva.com, I only use the free version. Here on the home page, and you'll see it says create a design and it says custom size. I'm going to choose custom size because I've already done this size in the past and it will bring up my pre-designed sizes. If you haven't done anything in the past, go to create design, come down to custom size and then put your width and your height. Now I'm going to change this to inches. It automatically by default always comes to pixels and I'm going to do this in landscape. I'm going to do 11.75 in the width by 8.25 in the height. If you work in 8.5 by 11, you set those sizes. Now, to make this easier for me to be able to work with in Canva and also for the scan and cut to be able to pick up the outline, I'm going to change my basic blank white document that has come up here as 11.75 by 8.25 to a different colour. So I'm going to come up to the colour wheel at the top of the page and I'm going to change the background to pink. So I'm just going to choose a pink. Now that is too dark because I wouldn't want to waste all my ink printing something that dark. So I'm going to come over to where it says add new colour and I'm just going to drag this circle that's in the solid colour down a bit to make the, the background colour a bit paler. That way I won't waste as much ink. I found doing it this way rather than sometimes adding the darker outline as I've showed in a previous video that this, you know, kind of sometimes works out better for me. So you'll have two options which you can refer to and try and see which works for you. The, the principle for this is exactly the same whether you're making peel-off stickers or whether you're making die-cut stickers. This is what we've got so far. So the first one I'm going to start off with is just um, some simple text. So I'm going to come over to the text icon and I'm just going to choose any one of these headings here. I'll just choose add a heading for now. It doesn't really make any difference because I'm going to resize it and, you know, play about with colour in a few minutes. With add a heading highlighted, I'm going to put the capital locks on my keyboard and I'm going to type in my, hit the return on my keyboard, dog mum and hit return again and era and then I'm just going to left click anywhere on the page that just deselects it and enables me you know to move it around so I'm going to resize this down to be about two and a half inches wide and two inches high I'm going to zoom in a bit so you can see what I'm doing then I'm going to come back up and highlight just in fact, I'm going to highlight everything, come up to the top of the page and I'm going to choose my font first. Let's try this. Okay, I'll choose this Alpha Slab 1. This is one I've used recently as it says here and it's one of the free fonts that's in Canva. So now I'm just going to double click and highlight the word in. I'm going to come up to the text colour which is at the top of the page and I'm going to choose a red I think. Then I'm going to come to where it says add new colour and I'm going to grab this circle and just drag it down to make it a slightly deeper red. Then I'm going to highlight the word my and I'm going to come over to my colour palette and I've got some colours already chosen here. If you haven't, you know, click on the colour wheel move this into the colours that you want to see and then drag your white circle 
until you get a colour that you like, okay? So I'm going to make these different colours. So I'm going to double click and highlight the word dog, come back up to the colour wheel, and I'm just going to choose a blue. Then I'm going to highlight the word mum, I'm going to choose a green, and I'm going to highlight the word era and choose a kind of orangey yellow. So this is what I've got so far. But what I also want to do is highlight everything, come up to the spacing icon, which is the icon with the three horizontal lines and the double-ended arrow. I'm going to select that and I want to make the line spacing closer together. So I'm going to grab the this circle and I'm going to drag it down so that the words come together a bit more and then I'm going to click off and see how that looks. And I think that looks okay. If I want to change the letter spacing, I can come back to that same icon and I can make the letters come closer or further apart. But I'm going to leave it as it is, I think, for now. So that's my first word that I'm going to use. Now from here, I want to select it. I'm going to come up to Effects. I'm going to come down to Outline under Effect. And then I'm going to come down here to where it says colour. I'm going to choose white and you can see it puts a white outline around it but I want the whole thing to be white. I want basically my word to be cut as one, not like this. So I'm going to choose the white, click anywhere to deselect, come back to the effects and then under the thickness I'm going to take this up as much as it will go. This is kind of the effect I want. I'm going to zoom in so you can see it and I'm going to click off to deselect okay this is kind of the effect that I want but I don't want this gap in the middle to cut I want to fill this in and this is where this is different to the last video I did as well so from here I'm going to come over to the left to the draw tool I'm going to choose the second one down to come to the color spot I'm going to choose white and then that now gives me a pencil with a circle on the end then I'm going to click on the bottom icon, which again is like three horizontal lines. And I'm going to take the weight of my pencil up. You can see the icons getting bigger. I don't want it too big because I want to be able to get in that gap. But I want it big enough that I can fill it without touching the coloured letters. So now I'm just going to click. And I'm going to drag this down. Now I can see I've gone out of the lines. So I'm going to undo. And I'm going to start with the top of my circle. Just within that area. And then I'm going to fill in all this pink area which is my background to get rid of that pink I can see there's a little bit here so I'm going to hover over there then I'm going to close the pen icon down I'm not so sure if I've got a little bit in the middle there that I could do with getting rid of so I'm going to go back to draw make sure I'm still on this and just get rid of that mark that's there these little indentations I'm going to keep I'm not bothered about those and everything else looks okay Okay, so I'm just going to hide the drawing tool. This is two separate items or however many times you've filled it in. So you can see if I click here, that's where the white is. It's there and then this is the main item. I'm going to select everything and I'm going to group. So that just means that everything now, if I click off and drag it around, is going to move together. I already know now that this is going to be slightly bigger than the two and a half by two I set it at because I added that outline. So I'm just going to drag it in and resize it to two and a half inches wide. Okay, so that's my first one done. I'm going to do another one just to show you. So I'm going to come back to the tech. I'm going to left click on add a heading drag this over here and then at this time I'm going to still keeping the capitals on I'm going to type my dog carriage return and I talk carriage return about you now this time I'm going to select the word about you and I'm going to change the font and I want a kind of um, handwriting type font so up at the top I'm going to choose handwriting and let's try right I'm going to go with this it's called Themsian, T-H-E-M-Y-S-I-O-N, okay? And then for the My Dog and I Talk, I'm going to go back and use that alpha slab. So I've got My Dog and I Talk and then About You in a script type font. 
this time I'm going to make it all one colour I think so I'm going to come up to the colour and I'll make it green then I'm going to come up to the colour wheel and I'm just going to drag the circle down and make it a nice dark green then I'm going to come back to the spacing and I'm going to take the letter spacing up and I'm going to take the line spacing so it comes closer together okay so that's what I've got so far now this time I'm going to come up to elements I'm going to grab a square let me just zoom back out a bit so you can see and I'm going to shrink this into a, a rectangle shape and place it behind my words I'm going to select both I'm going to drag it out till it's about two and a half ish we'll make it two two inches wide one and a half inches high I'm going to select the rectangle you can see up here I'm on the pink and I'm going to change it to white so now I've got a white rectangle with my green words I can bring this so it's closer in and then I'm going to select both and make them a group. So that's my second one. Now for the next one, I'm going to bring in a design I've already got in my uploads. And this is a PNG that's already got the white border. So I don't have to do anything at all with this one apart from resize it to how I want. But I might want to get rid of some of this pink background. So I'm going to resize it down until it's about two and a half inches high because this is more of a, a rectangle vertical shape. So two and a half inches high by two inches wide. I'm going to zoom in again so you can see. So if I was to cut this, the scan and cut would try and get in here and cut these little fiddly bits out and I don't want that so again I'm going to come back to the draw the, the white pen is already chosen because that's the last thing I've used and I'm going to colour in this gap so I've got rid of that gap there's a little bit there in the middle and then I'm going to get rid of this so I'm going to colour this in and this is where depending on what you're working with you know you can choose to make size of, of this pencil head bigger or smaller and I think that looks okay. I could maybe come down here and just level this up a little bit more. Then close the pencil to deselect. Again, now if I take this away, you'll see here's my original shape and here are these bits I've drawn in. So I'm going to undo that so it all goes back together. I'm going to drag an imaginary box around everything. And you can see I've got several purple bounding boxes, which is where I drew the pen marks in. And I'm going to group that together. So that now becomes one when I move it. And again, if I want to resize it, let's make it two and a half inches high by two inches wide. And then just place it here. And then let's just do one more with text. So I'm going to hit text. I'm going to choose add a heading again. I'm going to come up to the text icon. And let's just see if I can, let's go back to handwriting and look for a handwriting text. So this time, I'm not sure if I'm going to use this one yet, Beth Allen or not, I'm going to highlight the words and I'm going to type this all in lowercase. I'd rather be carriage return with my dog. Highlight everything. I'm going to come up to the colour wheel and I'm going to choose a kind of ready, ready ready brownish I think so I'm going to bring the colour circle all the way over into the reds and then as I'm dragging this circle here the colour's changing here I think that will do so I'm going to stick with that and I can see it's changed mm. on screen but I don't like the font so let's see quite like that one it's a bit whimsical that's hibernate too okay I'll stick with this one for now this one's called coming soon and again I'm going to add a shape around the outside so I'm going to come back over to elements I'm going to choose a shape that's got a rounded corner. I'm going to put it behind the design and I'm going to come up to the top of the screen and change it to white. And when I click away, you can see now I've got my words 
with a rounded corner. Again, I'm going to select both and group them. And then again, I'm going to change the width and the height. I want them all to be a similar size, two by two and a half, whether that's in landscape or portrait. So this one I'm going to make two and a half wide, which makes it about one and a half high. If you can hear Eddie in the background, I don't know what he's doing, puffing and panting, he's been running around, I think. I'm going to zoom in on this and I'm just going to ungroup it for a minute and I'm going to choose the rectangle and just make it a little bit bigger so that the words sit nicely in the middle. So I'm just going to choose both and make them a group. So from here, that's all I'm going to do for now. So basically what I would do, I would line these up on my page and make them fit as best I can. So I've kind of got four there. If I select them and hit the duplicate icon, I can put another four and then I'm just going to select, select them again and duplicate them. And then I'm just going to make them fit on this page to get as many stickers as I can to print and cut on one sheet. So that I kind of end up with an even number of each one. So I've got four designs, one, two, three, four, and then I want, you know, as many of the same as each as possible. And then this is, you know, if you're selling them in packs, you can, you know, create as many packs from one A4 sheet in one go. Or if you're using them for yourself, just make them all different. Just fill up your page, however you want to do it. So I've got like a full sheet. I'm making the most out of my sheet. Now from here, I would give this a name at the top of the page. It's given it in my dog era because that's the first thing I typed. So I would call it die cut sticker A4 then come over to file and save and that will save it into Canva so you can come back and just reprint it time after time and then I would go to share download you need to change the style of the download. It will automatically download as a PNG, but you want to print it as a PDF document through your printer so that you can then put that print out onto your scan and cut mat and get the scan and cut to directly cut all around for you. So you want PDF print, which says is best for printing, and it shows you here PDF print, and then you download it. And that's going to drop into my downloads folder. So if I just go to my downloads folder and drag it out onto my desktop and double click to open it, it will open it. And that's my PDF printable. And then from here, I would go to the, um, on my, I use a Mac and I've got the print icon. You just go to however you do it. You can see your design here fits on your A4 sheet nicely and then just choose whatever settings you want to choose. I normally leave it as it is. The only thing I normally change is the quality. So I would click on quality and under quality I would choose best and then print. And that's all you have to do to, to make your own die cut stickers with a white outline border for completely free using Canva. So I hope you found that helpful. Please give the video a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.